All right, so I want to give you a, a whole bunch of examples to illustrate this concept. So I want to start with a, the most simple one, the generating function of the constant sequence a n equals 1. So I'm talking about the sequence, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And that, the generating function for that sequence is 1 over 1 minus x. That was our first example. It's a silly little example, but it, it certainly works. The infinite series, every coefficient is 1, is the function, the familiar function, 1 over 1 minus x. All right, the generating function of the sequence a n equals n plus 1 for all n greater than or equal to 0 is 1 over 1 minus x squared. Now, where does that come from? Okay, it comes just by applying calculus. So, since that first function is a real function, 1 over 1 minus x is equal to 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus dot dot dot, that's a real function. It has a radius of convergence. That radius is 1. And so inside that radius of convergence, it can be differentiated term by term. So let's differentiate this. Now, I want to see that as 1 minus x to the minus 1 power. So to differentiate it, it's minus 1 times 1 minus x to the minus 2 times the derivative of minus x is another minus 1. That's the derivative of the left-hand side, using a chain rule. All right, and the derivative on the right side, this is 0, 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared plus 4x cubed plus dot, dot, dot. Now, this function, minus 1 and minus 1 is plus 1, and 1 minus x to the minus 2 is 1 over 1 minus x squared. So... You have this term, this expression like this. Now, over here on the right-hand side, what's the coefficient of x to the n? You can see 3x squared. So the coefficient of x to the n is n plus 1. Okay, now back to the... main thing. And you can see that's, that calculation verifies the second statement. A n, the generating function of the sequence a n equals n plus 1 for all n greater than equal to 0 is 1 over 1 minus x squared. Okay, the third one I don't even need to write up. We, we mentioned it the other day in passing. The generating function for the constant, for the con, it's not constant, the word constant should not appear there. The generating function of the sequence a n equals 1 over n factorial for all n greater than or equal to 0 is e to the x. Remember that one? Okay. All three of these examples are just calculus. In the first two, the radius of convergence is 1. And in the third example, the radius is infinite. The infinite series for e to the x converges for all x. Okay, now a comment. As we progress, I'm going to drop this phrase for all n greater than or equal to 0, and I'll just talk about the sequence a n equals n plus 1. And so when I say that phrase, a n equals n plus 1, you're supposed to remember he means that expression is valid for all n greater than or equal to 0. But I get tired of writing to n greater than or equal to 0. So with time, I'll, I'll stop. Okay, here's some more calculus. The generating function of the sequence a n is equals minus 1 to the n. So you see how I dropped the n greater than or equal to 0? Okay. It's 1 over 1 plus x. That is, 1 over 1 plus x is 1 minus x plus x squared minus x cubed plus x to the fourth minus x to the fifth, etc. Okay? Now, <clears throat> we're... Where did I get that from? I just substituted x for minus x in the first example. Clear? All right, now, 
let's integrate both sides. So the, the antiderivative, the integral of 1 over 1 plus x, the x, is log, natural log of 1 plus x. And the integral on the right-hand side is x minus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3, et cetera, et cetera. Now, there's a constant floating around in there. But what is that constant? You know, what, the constant is set by evaluating the two sides when x is 0. When x is 0, the left side is the logarithm of 1. Logarithm of 1 is 0. And the right-hand side when x is 0 is 0. So the constant is 0. So the, the equation is correct the way I wrote it. All right, now let's, let's see if you remember your calculus. The radius of convergence of the sequence on the first line, the series, is what? The radius of convergence is 1. Does that series converge at either endpoint? No. If you take x equals 1, again, it's the alternating 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1. You know, that doesn't converge. And if you set x to be minus 1, then it's just 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, et cetera. That doesn't converge. So the, the original series converges when the absolute value of x is less than 1, but at neither endpoint. Right. Now, when you integrate it, you don't change the radius of convergence, but you may change the behavior at the endpoints. And now, at the value of x equals 1, that series becomes 1 minus a half plus a third minus a fourth, et cetera. That's the alternating harmonic series, and that converges. So it converges to the logarithm of 2. You remember that? Might be second semester calculus, 1502 or something like that. However, it doesn't converge when x is minus 1. When x is minus 1, then it, you get the negative of the harmonic series, and that diverges. So yes on one side and no on the other. OK, just a subtlety reminding you from calculus. OK, now, if I take the expression in the second line, it's not in a neat form because it doesn't have a constant in it. Or it does, but the constant is 0. But if I divide both sides by x, then I have 1 minus x over 2 plus x squared over 3. At the, you know, it alternates back and forth. But So now I can say that the function logarithm of 1 plus x over x is the generating function for the sequence a n is minus 1 to the nth power over n plus 1. OK, so I'm not saying that these are totally trivial, but the point is that if you go back and review the kinds of things that you were doing in second semester calculus, you will see lots of examples of generating functions. And they are produced by taking derivatives and integrals of known functions and then combining them as sums, products, quotients, et cetera. OK. Now, and finally, one trivial example just to remind you that you can talk about the generating function for the sequence a n equals n factorial. So it would be the infinite sum, n equals 0 to infinity of n factorial times x to the n. But it has radius of convergence 0. So it has no meaning for any value of x. I mean, no meaning as a, as a calculus type function for any value of x other than x equals 0. Are you with me? OK.